So the next interaction to consider are going to be the B1 combinations that are that are shown here. And the B1 combinations um, illustrate the point uh, that you have another possible bonding combination, but now these are actually directed along the direction of the x-axis. And as you remember, the molecule is lying in the xz plane, so this is exactly in the direction of all the sigma bonding interactions. Um, but the important facet of this particular case is the fact that because the bonding is, is directed along the axis, what you wind up with is a situation, and I'll briefly um, redraw this here. So again, I'm just taking the, um, the B1 uh, combination uh, from the hydrogen, or the B1 hydrogen group orbital. And then if I superimpose on this, the in-phase combination um, from the PX atomic orbital on oxygen, you can very clearly see that there's a very strong um, bonding interaction that's occurring between the oxygen and the hydrogen atoms on each side of the, uh, of the oxygen. And that is obviously also gonna generate in this particular case, the combination here is the bonding combination, um, but then you'll also generate an antibonding combination as a result of that process. The other thing that's really to keep in mind here, in this particular case, because everything is directed along the bonding axis, these um, interactions are going to be very strong as a result of that. If you kind of go back to the, uh, the combination we had here, where we have the A1 uh, hydrogen group orbital with um, the PZ orbital uh, from oxygen, if you kind of see the way that this is going to be portrayed, it winds up being similar but not the same as what you saw above. If you can see here, there's an in-phase combination that occurs, but it's an overlap that's in essence similar to a Sidon overlap that you would get um, with, a, with, a, with a pi orbital. So the net result of this is that this interaction is actually you know, weaker with respect to um, the one that's um, occurring in the B1 interaction. So energetically, what that's going to end up looking like is the um, the B1 combination is going to be you know more energetically stable um, than the A1 um, bonding combination if we think about this from the context of of sort of the molecular orbitals where we're trying to visualize. Uh, finally, the B2 combination obviously in this particular case is non-bonding because there's no symmetry match um, to anything that is um, constructed from the H2 group orbital, so um, that will be non-bonding. So ultimately, when we build this MO diagram, you can kind of see here that we have one, two, three, four, five, and six um, different orbitals that are gonna actually have to be combined um, to make the molecular orbitals that are gonna compose the diagram. So basically, that's the simple idea that we will generate six MOs as a result. So now, um, energetically speaking, let's look at what we're gonna what we're gonna develop here. So the hydrogen group orbitals are gonna have an energy that's sitting at at minus 13.6 eV. That's a great energy match for the oxygen base 2p orbitals, but it's effectively a giant energy mismatch with respect to the oxygen 2s orbital. So once again, as what we said on the other slide was, is that that interaction is going to be um, effectively non-bonding as a result of that really big um, energy difference that we see between those uh, sets of orbitals. So now we can compose the final diagram uh, of water as a, as a result of all of this work that we put into it. So now laying out everything in terms of energy, so remember energy is going up in this picture, what you, what you find is, is on the left side of the diagram, we have the oxygen-based atomic orbitals. 
And then on the right side of the diagram, uh, so we'll say those are the oxygen atomic orbitals. And then on the right side, we basically have the H2 group orbital um, or group orbitals listed here. And then we have the uh, in-phase and out-of-phase combinations, but for all intents and purposes, they're the same energy. Um, I just drew them separated uh, just to illustrate that they have different phasing. So remember what we're gonna do. We have to correlate the symmetries as well as the energy. So if you look at the first symmetry correlation here, what you wind up with is you get an in-phase combination, um, but as we said before, because the energetic differences are so big, this orbital is effectively non-bonding. And then if you remember, we have three different A1s. So there's one here, one here, and the one up here. So that means we have to have three molecular orbitals that have A1 character. And then because the energetic separations between this one here and the PZ orbital, um, on oxygen right there, is better energetically matched. Those will make in-phase and out-of-phase bonding and anti-bonding combinations as illustrated there. And once again, you can see here the way that I did this was the in-phase combination, all the, the lobes are filled in dark. And then the out-of-phase combination, I took the group orbitals out-of-phase combination. So basically taking A1 um, and take the negative of it, that's what you get up here for that group orbital. Finally, we have the B1 interaction. And remember what we said on the previous slide, because there's more significant overlap of all of those orbitals involved, those are actually going to be a more bonding or more stabilizing event. So that brings the, the B1 orbital lower in energy as a result. And then, of course, the corresponding antibonding orbital is then brought up in energy um, by the same amount, because remember, we have to conserve energy when we draw these diagrams. Um, now, putting it all together, you basically know that on the left side here, we have six valence electrons um, total from oxygen, and then we have two electrons over here. So in the, in the bonding diagram or the MO diagram, we have to now include eight electrons in that in that count so by doing that we um, will put those in as well and then of course as I said um, before I forgot to include the uh, the non-bonding uh, b2 orbital which has no symmetry match so now if we want to include all of the electrons what we're going to do is we put them all in um, obeying the off bow principle and the net result of that is, is that we, we know for a fact that we had a non-bonding lone pair um, from oxygen because it came from here. So we know that that's one of the lone pairs. Here's another one that comes from the oxygen. So that's another lone pair that actually you know, belongs to oxygen formally. And then we have two molecular orbitals where you basically, in each particular case, these are representative of the fact that we made two sigma bonds. So that is consistent really with the Lewis dot structure of water where we have two sigma bonds. Um, so that's one of them, that's the other. And then of course we have two lone pairs, which are the non-bonding pairs that you see in this diagram. And the other interesting part about this is the highest occupied molecular orbital in oxygen is actually one of the non-bonding pairs that you see. So I hope that was informative and I look forward to continuing this discussion um, as we you know, delve into some more complex molecules moving forward. Um, thank you and have a great day.